Good evening and welcome to the National News Broadcast. We are going to bring you the top stories from home and around the world. I'm Natalia Viravadana. A very good evening to you. I'm Dishan Virakon and here are your headlines for tonight. The rice mill owners said to provide the necessary rice requirement for the festive season in a concessionary rate. The interrogation of the Swiss embassy employee has continued to the third day. Disparities have been observed in the recorded evidence. Sri Lanka ranked high in the Human Development Index according to the latest UNDP report. A warm welcome extended to the newly crowned Mrs. World 2020 who arrived into the country today. The Sri Pada pilgrimage season commences tomorrow. Sri Lanka secures the highest number of gold medals won outside the country during this year's South Asian Games. Chilean military plane with 38 passengers vanishes on Antarctica mission. And on the top story, large-scale rice mill owners have agreed to provide rice for a concessionary rate for the consumers during this festive season. This decision has been reached during a meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat today. Accordingly, the rice mill owners have agreed a maximum retail price rate of 98 rupees for a kilogram of both Nadu rice and Samba rice, as per the Ministry of Finance, Economy and Policy Development. The distribution of rice under the new price rates will be commenced tomorrow. Accordingly, the consumers will have the opportunity to purchase rice during the festive season without any shortage. Anuradhapur District Secretary R.M. Waninaika has said that measures have been taken to convert 1 million kilogram of paddy into rice. Accordingly, the paddy stored in government stores will be converted into rice and distributed to Satasa institutions. Divisional Secretariats in Anuradhapura have taken measures to supply paddy to mill owners in the district with the capacity to promptly convert paddy into rice. 27 paddy stores in Anuradhapura district consist of 4.7 million kilograms of samba and red nadu paddy. The paddy stock expected to be converted into rice before December 15th. The district secretary has informed that the payments for the paddy mill owners will be made from the revenue earned through the rice issued to Satosa stores. Now, the Criminal Investigation Department recorded a statement from Swiss Embassy employee involved in the alleged abduction incident, Garnia Barrister Francis, also known as Shriya Lata Pereira, for the third consecutive day today. Steps were taken to produce her to the Colombo Judicial Medical Officer this evening. Swiss Embassy employee Garnia Barrister Francis, also known as Shriya Lata Pereira, arrived at the Criminal Investigation Department at 8.55 a.m. today. She has recorded statements for a period of close to five hours till 1.55 p.m. at the CID. Subsequently, she was taken to the Colombo Judicial Medical Officer at around 2.05 p.m. The Colombo Judicial Medical Officer has examined whether the alleged victim has been physically harassed or abused in accordance to an order issued by Colombo Chief Magistrate. After a two-hour-long medical examination, Garnia Barrister Francis has returned to the CID premises at around 4.30 p.m. The interrogation has been concluded at 6.30 p.m. According to the lodge complaint, the relevant employee had been allegedly abducted near a school in Colombo 7. However, her statement has indicated that she was questioned at a residence of a relative in Bambala, Pitya. Evidence has revealed that the alleged victim was safely transported from a red-coloured vehicle to a house in Malika Khanda, though she had behaved in a manner that she was abducted in a white-coloured vehicle. She was born in Kalani and she is the niece of former Kalani electoral division organiser Bevan Pereira. Sri Lanka has been ranked at the 71st position out of 189 countries according to the Human Development Index 2019 released by the United Nations Development Programme yesterday. Compared to 2018, this is an improvement by five ranks. According to the report titled Beyond Income, Beyond Averages, Beyond Today, Inequalities in Human Development in the 21st Century, Sri Lanka's Human Development Index has progressively increased up to 0 0.780 in 2018 from 0 0.625 in 1990, in a scale ranging between 0 to 1. The country is ranked in the high human development category in the index that is a composite national measure of health, education and income for 189 countries. 
Compared to Sri Lanka, other South Asian countries are in the medium human development or low human development categories. The report, which focuses on the inequalities in human development in the 21st century, has warned that climate change and technological changes are increasing inequality around the world and could contribute to civil unrest, especially in developing countries. Now, the global launch of the Human Development Report 2019 was held today. The first copy of the UNDP's latest report was handed over to Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. The report was presented to the Prime Minister with the participation of United Nations resident representatives. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa expressed his pleasure over the achievements of the country in human development as Sri Lanka has been ranked in the high human development category. UNDP Sri Lanka resident representative Robert Jukum and UN Sri Lanka resident coordinator Hannah Singer was present on this occasion. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa met with a group of specialist doctors at the Temple Trees last evening. The Prime Minister instructed the doctors to direct their attention to the necessary processes in providing a quality service for the public during the meeting. A discussion was held on long-term and short-term solutions for the existing professional issues encountered by the doctors. Secretary to the Prime Minister Garmini Senarath and Secretary to the Ministry of Finance R. Artigala were present on this occasion. And now a newly crowned Mrs. World 2020, Caroline Jury, arrived to the country this morning. Caroline Personal Jury competed in the, the Mrs. World 2020 pageant Mrs. recently World held in Las Vegas, representing Sri Lanka. She won World the Mrs. World 2020 crown by beating 80 contestants from all across the world. Caroline Jury is a mother of a two-year-old girl and a customer service executive in profession. The new Mrs. World is Sri Lanka! Mrs. World 2020, take your first walk. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. World, Mrs. World 2020, 2020. Caroline and Jury. Caroline Jury is a mother of a two year old girl and a customer service executive in profession. A massive crowd was gathered at the Bandanaik International Airport to welcome her. Subsequently, Mrs. World 2020 Caroline Jury was brought to Colombo in a motorcade and a massive crowd gathered in her resident area of Mahabage Ragama warmly welcomed her. The crowd gathered in the roadside also expressed their best wishes to the newly crowned Mrs. World 2020. Please support them because they are representing our country. So that's why my advice I can give. As one people, please support. And whatever you do, always keep God first. Keep your religion. You can be Christian, Buddhist, Muslim, or whatever. Without God, we cannot be success in our life. To be honest, that I'm very different from my family. I'm very open. so. I know the pain what I went through when people didn't accept me for who I am. They judge me from outwards, but inner I'm something different, not the person who I'm outwards. So I always had a passion to help the children who are suffering from hate and depression. Because when I'm young, I did the same thing also. So as Mrs. World, I will have a great honor to help those children because people will listen to me. So I want each and everyone to help me, to help the children who are suffering in Sri Lanka. As for my life's experience, I know the pain what I went through. So as a Sri Lankan, I'm asking you all one help. So help me, support me to help the children who are suffering. Now, illustrious emerging markets investor Dr. Mark Mobius says that Sri Lanka has resumed its path to economic growth with the recent government change. He said that Sri Lanka's economic growth was at a halt in the past four years. Dr. Mobius made these remarks in a forum held in Colombo today. 
Legendary investor Dr. Mobius participated in the exclusive forum hosted by Cinema Life, which was his only official speaking event held in the country during his visit. The invitee-only event titled Emerging Markets and Sri Lanka's Growth Trajectory was attended by influential leaders in the Sri Lankan corporate sector. Dr. Mark Mobius has a reputation as one of the most successful and influential investment managers over the last 30 years. His career and influence have earned him numerous industry awards. That is all for the better. It's seen by many as the fun. I expect most of the questions will actually uh, come from. In the last, uh, what has been four years, there's been sort of a respite. In other words, there was a halt to, to growth and to improvement in the economy. Prior to that, the country was on a really a growth path. And now with the change in government, I see a resumption of that previous growth path. So the prognosis is good. It looks quite, quite good going forward. The question now is how fast the new government can move to make those changes and improvements. And that, that will really kickstart the economy, keep, keep going. I must say that um, the opportunity at this juncture in the global economy is very, very positive for one very important reason, and that is interest rates. Interest rates are low and going lower. So we're seeing almost a, a deflationary environment, which is very, very good for Sri Lanka. Uh, the debts that the country has have to be paid off, and the fact that you can have lower rates can mean a restructuring of that debt and hopefully raising new debt to help the country grow. The key, of course, in any growth environment is investment. You've got to encourage investment. And that doesn't mean just foreign investment, domestic investment. Now, how do you encourage domestic investment? First way is to make it easier. In other words, uh, government procedures, bureaucracy, has to be streamlined and digitized. You know, one of the great things now is that with the digitization, it's becoming much more easy, it's easier now for governments to collect taxes, to approve licenses, et cetera, et cetera. And it's becoming easier for the, the public to access. Number two is taxes. You have to make a tax environment which is globally competitive. So you have to look at Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, even India. You know, India has recently lowered the taxes. And you have to say, look, we want to be better. We want to have even a better tax environment. Now, I realize the government is faced with the debts and they face with expenditures that they have to make. But in that context, they have to think of new ways to raise capital and to reduce government spending. And the way to do that is to start bringing state enterprises to the market. The degree to which you expose government enterprises to the market is a really big, big step in the right direction. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean privatization. It doesn't mean giving away uh, the crown jewels of the country. What it means is exposing government companies to the strong light of visibility, exposure, yes. that we're in a new beginning, so to speak. In other words, we're turning another page in the growth picture for the country, and you've got to be optimistic, really. You've got to positively and really make plans for growth. At the end of the day, that's really the key. Think about growth and try to influence the government to move in that direction. In other words, free up uh, the process, make it easier to move forward and encourage more investment. Leader of United National Party, Ranil Vikramasinghe, has says that the party should contest in the upcoming general election by avoiding the shortcomings occurred in the recently concluded presidential election. These remarks were made during a meeting held with representatives of civil society organizations in Colombo last evening. Representatives of the civil society organizations which had extended their support to the United National Party in the presidential election took part in this meeting. Leader of United National Party, Ranil Vikramasinghe, expressed his gratitude to the support extended by the civil society organizations during the presidential election. He said that they would have met in a different place if their plans had been implemented in a proper manner. He said that all should think afresh and think of a way to gain 113 seats in the parliament. He said that all forces should be united to achieve this objective. Now, former President Maitripal Sirisena says that all parties without any discrimination should extend their support to the new government led by President Gotabe Rajapaksa for the development of the country. He made these remarks while addressing a ceremony held in Maligavata area in Colombo today. 
Garu, Gotabe, Rajapaksha, Jarad Baitwa. Former President Maitripa Srisen has said that President Gotabe Rajapaksha gained a mammoth victory in the presidential election. He said that the president received the blessings of all of them. He said that all parties in the country should support the incumbent government led by the president for the development of the country. The former president pointed out that poverty is the main issue in the country. Therefore, he said that necessary support should be rendered to the new government to further strengthen the economy and alleviate poverty from the country. He added that the new government led by the president and the prime minister should receive the support of the entire nation on this task. He said that the business community, state sector employees and general public should support the effect the effort rather of the government without any political bias. Now the Med Department has indicated that the prevailed heavy shower condition in the northern, eastern and Uva provinces is expected to reduce temporarily during the next few days from tomorrow. Several spells of showers will continue to occur in some parts of the country. Showers or thunder showers about 75 mm are likely to occur in the eastern, northern, north central and Uva provinces and Hambantota district. Fairly heavy falls between 75 to 100 mm are expected to occur in Sabargamu and western provinces. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in sea areas extending from Kankasanture to Gaul via Trincomalee, Batiklo and Hambantota. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in the other sea areas sur surging the afternoon or night. Temporarily strong gusty winds up to 70 to 80 km per hour and rough seas can be expected during thunder showers. Several roads in Colombo was inundated due to the heavy falls occurred this evening. The heavy falls had hindered the motor traffic, creating traffic congestion in several roads. Eight slice gates of Irinamaru Reservoir in Kirinochi have been opened due to the inclement weather condition and increased the water level of the reservoir up to 35 feet. Kirinochi Disaster Management Centre has informed the residents living in the low-lying areas of the Irinamaru Reservoir to be cautious of the prevailing conditions. Many tanks in Vaunia district has, have been overflowed. Steps have been taken to break the dams of three tanks, Poonava, Siebalagasvava and Kidavarankulam tanks in Divisional Secretary Division in Madhavachya, which have reached the spill levels to avoid overflowing of the tanks. Reports have indicated that thousands of acres of paddy fields have been inundated in the northern province. A spread of fungus as a result of the inclement weather condition in Vaunia has also affected a papaya cultivation. 700 acres of paddy fields in Palya, Godal, Pamburana, Ahmadpura areas in Polonara district have been completely destroyed from the heavy falls. 300 acres of crop cultivation lands have also been destroyed. The crops cultivated in Thambalagamu, Kinia, Kolavat, Tuvan and Mailapan Sene have been damaged due to the prevailing flood situation. Many areas are still being affected from heavy showers. Mr. Dallas Salha Peruma says the government has taken a policy decision that all teachers in the country should be made graduates. The minister made these claims while speaking at a protest organized by the Joint Unemployed Graduates Association today. The protest was held in front of the Isurupaya Ministry of Education premises in Palavatta. The protesters demanded that those who have passed the student counselling examination, teachers' examinations and national schools' teachers' examinations should be given employments. Minister of Education Dallas Al Haperuma arrived to meet the protesters and accepted the letter of demands from them. The minister said that solutions will be provided for all relevant issues in near future. <laughs> minister of Education Dallas Al Haperuma said that the vacancies have been filled as the provincial councils have already presented teacher appointments for the vacant positions. However, the minister said that they have taken a decision to interview the 675 applicants. He said that the decision was taken not owing to the protest, but before a week ago. He said that the government has already taken this decision. The minister said that the policy statement of President Gotabe Rajapaksha has clearly pointed out the government's stance of the Dharmacharya examination. He said that 52,000 applicants will be recruited through the government. The minister said that the president has instructed the Ministry of Education that all teachers in the country should be made graduates through a policy decision. Now the election commission expects that contesting of certain contenders, political parties and independent groups on basis grounds in the upcoming elections will be lessened. Delivering a special statement to media, chairman of the commission Mahinda Deshapriya said that the relevant and necessary legal provisions will be called within the agreement of all parties. 
Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Desha Priya, said that they expect the contesting of certain contenders, political parties and independent groups on baseless grounds in the upcoming parliamentary election and the provincial council election which may take place in future will be lessened. He said that they expect the relevant and necessary legal provisions on this regard will be called with the agreement of all parties. He said that the use of media has also been debated. He added that a fair conclusion will be made on this regard. The Commission Chairman said that the Commission has taken the decision to take steps to prevent the contesting of the contenders in support of other contenders on baseless grounds. He said that a decision yet to be reached over the amount to be charged as the deposits to contest for elections and discussions have been initiated on this regard. He said that even though the Commission carry out discussions over the decision to be made on this regard, yet the Parliament should take the final decision related to this matter. The Sri Pada pilgrimage season set to begin with Undua Full Moon Day, which falls tomorrow. Transporting the statue of the deity placed at the Sri Pada Raja Mahavihara at Galpot Tavala in Palmadulla together with the relics casket and the jewellery of the deity and ornaments of the deity to Sri Pada was commenced at an auspicious time last evening. It was held under the patronage of Venerable Bengabue Dhammadina Thera. The first puja for the statue of the deity and the relics casket with the jewellery of the deity was held under the patronage of Sabaragamu Provincial Governor Tikiri Kobbekadur. The devotees were given the opportunity to worship the relics casket and the statue of the deity from 7 p.m. last night till 3 a.m. this morning. Arrangements have been made to deliver the relics casket with the jewellery of the deity to the Udamalwa of Sri Padastania from the Galpottavala Sri Padraj Mahaviharaya from four directions. One of the processions will be travelled from Galpottavala Sri Padraj Mahaviharaya through Balanguda, Bhagavantalava, Hatton, Nallathaniya to the Udamalwa of Sri Padastania. Another position will be travelled on Hatton, Nallathaniya Road through Palmadulla, Ratnapura, Avisavella, Kitulgala and Ginigathena. Another procession will be travelled through Palmadulla, Ratnapura, Palabaddala, Rajamavata to the Udamalua of the Sri Padastania. The final procession will be travelled from Ratnapura Mahasamandevalaya upon the Panadura Road through Godakala, Teppanava, Kuruvita and Eratna Road to the Udamalua of the Sri Padastania. And the Sri Pada pilgrimage season will be commenced after the processions reach the Udamalua of Sri Padastania. The season will last until the end of Vesak Full Moon Poe Day. More than 40 young Sri Lankan leaders travelled to Colombo from across the country to take part in U.S. Embassy-sponsored workshops on leadership and public service recently. The participants were all members of the U.S. Embassy's Youth Forum program, which is conducted by the American Corners in Colombo, Candy, Chathna and Matara. After the Colombo workshops concluded, the participants travelled to Jaffna to set up a reading corner at a local school. U.S. Embassy Deputy Chief of Mission Martin Kelly welcomed Youth Forum members to the workshop and shared his thoughts on the importance of leadership and community service. He encouraged members to nurture inclusive, thoughtful and courageous leadership to be critical thinkers and save consumers of information and to understand the experiences and perspectives of the country's diverse communities. Comprised mainly of university students, the Youth Forum offers promising young Sri Lankans an opportunity to develop professional skills and to work together to plan and carry out community service projects for underserved communities. Youth Forum volunteers each commit at least six months and 60 hours of service. During their tenure, volunteers receive leadership training, gain project management experience, participate in, in, in the Islander cultural exchanges, and build networks with like-minded youth and community partners. Now taking a look at the stock update for today, the All Shares Price Index closed at 6060.20 points, which dropped by 43.43 points, and the S&P SL20 Index closed at 2945.24 points, also dropping by 29.23 points at the end of trading in the Colombo Stock Exchange today. Turnover was over 573 million rupees. Now here is a summary of market details of the Colombo Stock Exchange today. And that is a wrap of tonight's primetime news. Until we meet again next time, do take care and good night. Good night.